Okay, so part three of my Argon One versus Ice Tower cooler test. Uh, a lot of the comments have mentioned that heat builds up in this case, and that can be relieved by taking off the top. Um, but if you if you leave it on 24/7, and especially if it's working hard, it does stay warm, and it does need to use the fan. So long term, I think for me still. I'd rather the ice tower cooler, uh, it definitely works really well for me. It is super quiet, even with the fan on, with 3.3 volts, it works great. You can see I've changed my setup a little bit, so I did have the tall ice tower cooler, this is the low profile one. Uh, I'm using it that it comes on at 70 degrees. I've got another couple of cables in there which is powering the little LED light, which used to be on the back of the case, it's just loose in the bottom here. Um, but I like the way that it illuminates the case. I think it looks very nice. I'm back to using this cable, uh, which shows the wattage of the Pi uh, and goes up and down when it's uh, using more power. It uh, it actually works totally fine with the Pi. I thought it did because I was using it for days beforehand. It just doesn't like the board in the Argon One case. So no. No problems with the Argon One case, it's just an incompatibility with this cable. So the reason why it's different, you can see here, there's a Pi 4, 8 gig in here. You can see that the headphone jack and also the two HDMI sockets are on the breakout board. But also it's connected via the GPIO pins on the Pi. So it doesn't need the USB-C socket. And uh, so I'm thinking that there's a possibility that it may be able to fix my 1 gig Pi. Because if the problem is my USB-C socket, then this is doing it via the GPIO pin. So I'm gonna try it in here and see if it makes a difference. But also if I go into the screen, I've been running a longer Stressberry test uh, on my Ice Tower cooler. And as you can see, even with the USB-C cable with the readout, it keeps its frequency. So 2148, I've overclocked it to 2147, but it shows as 2148 uh, all the way through. Doesn't change at all. Uh, on that test. Everything worked perfectly well with all four cores and uh, I've just got this where it idles for one second so I, I changed that because I just wanted to get it to heat up as quick as possible. But the fan came on, uh, again super quiet, uh, so uh, you can see on the bottom here it got to 72 degrees was the, the highest temperature it got to. Yeah, I don't even notice it's on, I can see it if I look at it but I don't even notice it standing right next to it that it's on, so really really pleased with that. So we go to uh, NeoFetch, we can see that it's reporting at 2.2. Um, but uh, if I go into config.txt and scroll down, I always find on the 8 gig Pi that I need to go to overvolt, which is 8, uh, to get 2147. But 2147 is uh, a frequency that I commonly use on my Pi 4. So let's close all this down. Really happy that that cable's working because I really like to see that wattage. So the question is, is this the difference that will fix my one gig Pi uh, by powering from the GPIO pins? It certainly would help if I've got a faulty USB-C socket and it's not giving enough power. I have um, cleaned this completely with isopropyl in all the sockets. Uh, I did it yesterday and uh, just in case that, that made any difference. It didn't, it's still not working. So let's try this extra thing. Just need to unscrew four screws and we pull it out with the GPIO pin so this end there we go so just a reminder of how it's connected so this board connects the Pi via the GPIO pins very clever so let's take these apart uh, and then pop this one together with the one gig Pi that hasn't worked with all the things I've tried I've tried all sorts of things you can check the comments on the one gig video. So that's together. Now GPIO pins back in. I love the way all this lines up. It is very nice to put together. So push that in. Don't really need to do much else. Uh, I suppose I could put this on the base. Just sit it on there. Oh, other way around. Just so I can test it. So the M.2 drive that's in there with KDE on it. Let's see what happens if I try and boot it up. Let's switch that on. I can hear the fan come on, I can see the power light come on. Haven't seen uh, a flash from the little green light fan stopped. Okay, nothing yet. So let's try it. Uh, oh, actually, I've got to switch it off first. Is it press and hold? Yeah. Uh, and then let's take out this USB 3 adapter and disconnect the M.2 drive. And let's try one of these SD cards I've written. I'm going to be able to see the light if I do it this way. Might be able to. 
see the green light flash yeah it flashed once like it's been doing it should flash after that as well but if it doesn't flash after that it's not doing the the EEPROM fix that it should be doing from my previous uh, Pi 4 1 gig fix video and let's just try it in USB as well so again power off and on again just a single light flash so it does detect the drivers there but it doesn't try to do anything else okay so it's not the USB-C power so it must be something else that's causing it not to work I'll keep trying so I'm going to run the Argon case uh, and I'm going to leave it on and I'm just going to use it normally so uh, I'm going to install the Dolphin emulator and the PPSSP emulator and uh, play a bit of video then just use it normally and see if it does uh, keep itself cool without needing the fan so because I've just turned it on it's a nice cool 35 degrees uh, but let's start with something like Pi apps and uh, and start installing some things so games PPSSPP looks like I might have to update the Pi apps as well but it's all normal things that I would do you can see the temperature is 39 so it's still nice and cool okay that's all done so let's go to Pi Kiss and install the Dolphin emulator let's exit that then I think I'll play uh, YouTube for uh, quite some time so play my longest video and leave it at 1080 full screen okay so 50 minutes in and we're at 58 degrees uh, and if we just go to the video you can see that it's on 50 minutes and 39 seconds an hour and three minutes in and it seems to be holding at 58 degrees it's about 17 degrees in this room so it's not particularly warm so obviously if you live in a much warmer climate then this will be affected a lot more than it is in this test but let's see if an emulator makes this work harder and uh, I've also plugged in a USB stick with some ROMs on it and uh, let's try PPSSPP I'm going to leave the video playing for the moment but uh, I'll turn it off when I'm playing the game so you can see it's gone up to 59 degrees now having extra things plugged in obviously will generate more heat as well so having extra drives having the controller plugged in it's all more power Okay, so I always have an issue trying to find uh, ROMs on an external drive with PPSSPP. So I'm going to minimize this and uh, I'm going to copy a ROM over. Uh, so it's still running in the background, PPSSPP. Uh, we've still got uh, P-Sensor running. We've got Chromium running the video as well. Uh, and what are we looking at? 59 degrees still, so pretty decent. So let's go to my USB stick with PSP ROMs on it. Let's copy over GTA. Vice City because I'm happy to play quite a bit of that and if I put it in my documents folder and let's check if to see if that's making things because obviously the drive is working harder if it's copying files over to it uh, but it's still keeping at 59 degrees so still very good you know considering this has been running for over an hour I think I might restart that video so yeah one hour and seven minutes so let's go right back to the beginning and let it play from the beginning in the background while we're doing all of this there you go, you can see the file copying over and PSP running at the same time. So we've got 60 degrees, but my fan is set to come on at 65, so it still hasn't come on. And this is working hard, although you can see the CPU usage is only 35, 40%. So that's nearly copied over that. Right, let's go into the PSP emulator and navigate to Home, Pi and Documents. And there's my game. So I'm just going to let it play the intro. So I've had to add this bet back in because my screen capture cut out when I went into the game. But I'm basically running it two times PSP. Um, it got up to about 63 degrees. Remember it's about 17 degrees uh, in this room. Uh, and it was actually very playable. It was, it was no problem at all. I drove around for 10-15 minutes and then realised that it, it still wasn't seeming to heat up too much. So I started copying a file from my NAS drive, a 4.2 gig PS2 file, and that did get the temperature to, uh, <laughs> I'm driving well, and that did get the temperature to get to the right bit. But I'll go back to the video, I would, <laughs> why am I crashing all the time? That is ridiculous, maybe go a bit slower. Let's just show you it running. Right, okay. But uh, yeah, actually it was performing all right, and that was with the video running in the background as well. So let's cut across here, or oh, there's not going to be any space, I'm going to have to go underneath. So considering this is two times, 
uh, and I'm running at 2147. I thought that was all right. Oh, usually I thought you could go up on there. Anyway, back to the other part of the video. Okay, so I'm going to play the video for another half an hour and see if I can get the fan to come on. We're at 63 degrees. Okay, so we're at 64. I've got PPSSPP uh, in the background. I've got YouTube playing at 1080. Uh, maybe let's try transferring a large file. So if I go to my NAS drive and let's have a look for a very big ROM that I can copy over. So in my ROMs folder, I think PS2 is probably going to be some of the biggest. Uh, I need to see how big some of these are. 2.8 gig, 4.2 gig, there you go. So GTA San Andreas, let's copy that over to my documents folder. So home, documents, and let's pop it there. And let's see if that heats, because that's obviously going to use the M.2 drive. Remember the M.2 drive probably adds about four or five degrees in my previous tests. That should definitely help to heat this up. Yeah, 65. So I should start to hear the fan coming on. Ah, so the fan has spun up. Now, I'm where I'd usually stand, uh, so probably my microphone is about a foot and a half away. It's a noisy fan. If I tap it, I don't know if they're usually as noisy as this, but it is a noisy fan. So, it's it's hard to say really. It, it, it does work really well. I am, I've got loads of things running. Um, but as others have reported, if you're using it, this in a warmer environment, the fan is going to come on and then for me that starts to become a bit annoying because I would not want the fan uh, with that sort of level of noise to be on all the time because it is quite off-putting so I've, I've closed a few things down now maybe it is that copying that file uh, that's made quite a lot of the difference so well let's shut down PSP and see if that makes a difference if we can stop that fan yeah, so it's already gone off. To be fair, I wouldn't run 1080 video and PSP, but it is only about 17 degrees in here. So as others have reported, uh, yeah, that, that could be annoying. I wish they put a quieter fan in. Um, so the one on the ice tower cooler is lovely and quiet. The thing is, it is quite a small fan. Uh, I could change the fan speed, so I don't need it to be as fast as it is. I think I got it to come on at 50%. Um, but uh, if you put it on at lower speed, maybe it's going to have the cooling effect, but it's not going to be as audible. But let me know if you've got one and you run it and, and you find the fan to be, to be quiet or what speed you run it on, what temperatures you run it at. I'd be interested. Okay, so I hope all this helps. Thanks very much for watching. Please like and subscribe.